Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the patch 4.2 website for Final Fantasy XIV. It is not yet complete, the only reason I'm really doing this is because the dungeons were added today. Normally I don't pay too much attention to those, but they are dungeons that I'm looking forward to as much as I can a dungeon at the very least. And there was preview of the new dungeon gear, which is something that I know quite a few people are always looking forward to. If I've visited this website yet, uh, every time a new patch comes out they do a new website, 4.1, 4.2, there'll be another one for 4.3, and so on and so forth. So uh, it's always good to come here occasionally, check for updates new screenshots, new details on some of the stuff. Not anything like a patch note, but at least a little bit of a preview where people can speculate based on the screenshots that pop up here, and eventually the trailer. So uh, in case you just haven't seen these real quick, I'll stop by and just quickly go over the main scenario ones. Uh, you can see, you know, obviously some of the members of, you know, the team since Stormblood here, and then we have Gosetsu, and we're all waiting for what's happening with uh, the one he's traveling with, and we have Hien, and we have Yugiri again. Not really a whole lot to say. Uh, we know we're going to be dealing with some sort of very troubled scenario over there in the east, like we just did over in Alamigo, which it even makes reference to here with Robon's long away to return. The Jade Stoa was the second thing here. Uh, we've been going over this on things like State of the Realm and whatnot. The first of the four lords, Biako, will be the primal for patch 4.2. So we'll have the Jade Stoa and the Jade Stoa Extreme, as well as probably Mount's weapons. You know the drill at this point. Uh, Final Fantasy XI fans can help but get a little bit of a smile when not only seeing Biako and knowing who the other three lords are of, uh, of Suzaku, uh, Siryu, and uh, Genbu, but on top of that, Legend tells of a peerless samurai who, at the behest of a king, ventured forth to drive a host of oni into the sea. Yet for all his strength, Tenzin, another thing that Final Fantasy XI fans to smile at, could not do this alone, so he turned to the four lords, greatest of the auspices, for assistance. Together they succeeded, and afterwards journeyed west, far from the realms of men, to live out their days in solitude. A fairy tale, perhaps, but often in such tales a kernel of truth can be found. I believe other translations make specific mention of details being omitted from the story, making it seem like less about a kernel of truth and more about what is wrong with that depiction of Tenzin and his and his uh, history. So I'm looking forward to finding out about the Four Lords, how they're integrated into Final Fantasy XIV, and hopefully getting a little bit more deep of a story than we got with the Warring Triad, which I was hoping was going to go the extra mile and accomplish uh, a few more things than I guess we kind of expected it to. The big thing that I want to talk about here is the new dungeons, though. Uh, now, normally, I don't care too much about dungeons, but Hell's Lid in particular uh, interests me, and Fractal Continuum was one of my favorite dungeons going throughout uh, all of the Heavensward expansion. It wasn't just that it was originally paired with Never Reap, and it was the better of the two dungeons, but... I've always just loved it. I've never gotten tired of running that dungeon whenever I get it in a roulette, and it's very Allegan based which always means it's integral to the story in some way, just because, well, Allegans. First, we'll take a look at Hell's Lid over here on the left. So having found themselves on somewhat dire financial straits, the signs of the Seventh Dawn are on the lookout for profitable ventures. Fortuitously, one appears to have presented itself, an anonymous missive from an individual seeking the aid of the warrior who laid low the Lord of Revel. But before they will divulge the details, they would put your abilities to the proof. Uh, to wit, you are to venture into the hidden depths of Hell's Lid, a volcanic island once home to a host of Oni, at least according to ancient legend. Now, it says that it used to be host to demons, but you can already see, kind of with the screenshots right here, that obviously... A little bit more is going on than uh, than we would otherwise have anticipated. By the way, if you ever go to the press site for Square Enix, you can generally find these screenshots in a higher resolution. Also, on the Lodestone itself, I believe, are some higher resolution pictures, because I can't actually click them and enlarge them here, unfortunately. I can only click between them. Uh, we can also see here, over on the left, uh, you can see... <laughs> listen, seeing that just makes me think of the diadem, which I'm not looking forward to, but I, I'm glad to see they're getting more mileage out of the fiery lion uh, core. Thank you, Los Angeles. You're great. Uh, fantastic. But anyway, uh, moving on. And this is a screenshot we had already seen during the actual live letter. I'm going to wait to show you the fifth screenshot, as that's the actual dungeon gear, whereas Fractal Continuum just has the four screenshots. So... Going on to the Fractal Continuum hard mode, the Fractal Continuum plays host to both technological marvels and chimerical horrors conceived through the unparalleled ingen ingenuity of the Allegans. And while its facilities have remained dormant since a recent endeavor to salvage materials, Garland Ironworks has detected a peculiar energy signature. How does Garland Ironworks have time to, Ironworks have time to deal with this and deal with 
Omega, because they're obviously both dealing with... I guess, technically, you could only... You could divulge a small portion to Omega, but uh, just notice that. Uh, it detected a peculiar energy signature emanating from within. Few would dare even ponder what monstrosities yet stir within, but the Warrior of Light need not wonder. The Ironworks has beseeched their aid to investigate the resurgence of activity within the ancient Allegan Museum. So that's what the Fractal Continuum was. It was a museum for all the chimerical things that the uh, that the Allegans themselves actually did, and we already went in there and took care of and took care of most of the things that were there. But we left a lot of it alone as well. It looks like whatever is in there is freeing all the things that were on display that we had not already destroyed, and that those things are now running rampant within the Fractal Continuum itself. One of my favorite screenshots is this one right here. So this is a screenshot that portrays Sephiroth on the left, Sophia in the middle, and Zervin on the right. Most noticeably is the fact that this is clearly a boss room, as you can see, or at the very least, you have to get through some sort of trial here in order to continue on with the dungeon, because you can see what looks to be a boss gate over there on the right-hand side of the picture. So I'm hoping that this is probably not the final boss, but it's one of the bosses that is going to be in the Fractal Continuum itself, and it's probably going to contain elements that came from each of the three primals. This isn't too abnormal. Uh, a lot of dungeons tend to take old boss mechanics and introduce them to players uh, in a more casual sense in the four-man dungeons, so that if they were to ever visit or see those style of mechanics again, you'd be able to recognize them to some degree. Uh, but this is just a cool concept for me. Uh, I really wasn't satisfied with the Warring Triad as an entirety, not just their individual encounters, but as a story. I didn't like the way that it concluded. So getting anything more on them for me is satisfying, even if it's probably going to be a no lore in a no lore attached uh, you know, slight explanation given encounter in the Fractal Continuum hard mode. The next, uh, the next screenshot is one people have already seen at this point, us fighting a giant Allegan Tombstone. I'd, again, like to believe that this isn't exactly the final boss, but that it's just either some sort of trash pull or one of the bosses that's going to be available there. If anything, it reminds me of the giant room in the Fractal Continuum where we had to destroy... Uh, where we had to turn off the three generators, and then we went to the center, and that was where the actual finale took place. I wonder if we're just doing killing these things and whatever adds they summon in order to further progress into the Fractal Continuum itself. And then this, I don't know what, I have a hard time seeing that, just, I, it's probably just me, with uh, the lights that are coming out of him, and just, I, I, I can I can kind of tell what it is. I can tell at least what frame model it's using and how tall it is, but the relevance of that thing, I, I see a pod behind it, so I'm assuming it came out of whatever that pod is. It also actually looks to be similar to the room where we just saw the Warring Triad displays, like if you go back two pictures. Uh, yeah, in fact, I'm almost positive it's the same room. I wonder if this guy is going to be using, or is going to be absorbing the powers of the various, uh, of the various members of the Warring Triad in order to actually execute his mechanics or if it's just almost sort of coincidence that it somewhat looks at, at least the bottom platforms look the similar uh this other top thing right here does, i don't see that in the other screenshot and it kind of looks like it's a similar thing behind him so we'll have to see how that actually ends up working out but the frack continuum hard mode is probably the most excited i've been for a dungeon and probably the most excited i will be for a dungeon for a very long time now going back to the screenshots over here on the left it looks like this is the same gear from Castrum Abania, if I'm not mistaken, except with a different color scheme. Now, that's not too abnormal, because if I recall correctly, in 3.2, they reused the level 55 gear and gave it a different color scheme as well, so players would have uh, a different set of options in terms of what they could do glamour-wise with these sets. I don't remember about being dieable very much, because I don't pay too much attention to that stuff. I like the Castrum Abania set at least visually, but um, as someone who's colorblind, these are still somewhat more inviting to me as a color scheme, especially the one on the right, the one that the Roganin is wearing. And so if you're looking to collect more glamours, uh, the even-numbered patch is always a great way to do that. I mean, just going back to the top, sometimes you get more glamour stuff from, like, Main Scenario. Uh, obviously, you'll have new weapons for glamour. You'll have new dungeon gear for glamours. You'll have uh, the Sigma Scape gear. I'm hoping we get new Feast gear as well, even though there's not much other reason to do PvP right now. For Vinlandia Eureka, we're supposed to get Relic Armor, so hopefully they still stay true to that. Beast Tribe Quest will probably get some glam-related stuff. Um, Hildebrand, maybe something. 
And obviously there's going to be massive additions to the glamour system in the way that that works. So there's a lot to look forward to with this patch. For me, it's all about Forbidden Land, but we're not going to hear about that for quite some time. But anyway, let me know what you think of the new dungeon set, what you think of the Fractal Continuum hard mode, what you think we're going to actually be doing in there in terms of the elegant monstrosities that are available. And uh, let me know what you think in the comment section of the video below. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned. As soon as there's more to talk about, I'll try to make more videos. Thanks. And until next time, take care.